Welcome to this step-by-step -step Audacity tutorial for beginners. I am using Audacity 3.7 for this tutorial series. It was the latest version during the video was made, and it will work perfectly for Audacity 3.6 as well. This is a detailed guide to help you get started smoothly with Audacity. I created this video to ensure you can begin any professional audio work the right way. You may need to watch it a couple of times to grasp and apply everything fully. This is the first part of the series, where we'll focus on how to start with voice recording. In this Audacity tutorial, we'll cover four main things. How to record your voice. While recording might seem straightforward, many people struggle to get high-quality audio because they don't get this part right. How to edit your recording. Editing involves navigating through the audio to remove unwanted parts or add missing sections. We'll dive into this in detail. How to process the recording for better sound quality. Even with the best recording equipment, some processing is always necessary to achieve professional sound. We'll explore how to apply audio effects to enhance your recording. How to export an audio file. Simply recording in Audacity doesn't give you a usable audio file. We'll learn how to export the recording for use in different projects or platforms. Let's start with recording. There are various reasons you might need to record your voice, and I've listed some common purposes. This tutorial will guide you through the process no matter your goal. Recording in Audacity is quite simple. Press the red record button, and the recording begins. As I click the record button, you'll see the waveform of the audio being captured. This waveform represents your recording, and later, you'll edit and process it. In essence, audio editing revolves around modifying and enhancing this waveform. However, simply pressing the record button isn't enough to ensure a good recording. Before recording, it's important to check that all your settings are properly configured. If you don't set up the options correctly, the recording quality will suffer. If you take away just one thing from this tutorial, let it be this, there is no substitute for a good quality recording. Achieving the best possible recording quality in your setup is crucial because the final audio's quality is directly tied to the recording itself. A high-quality recording not only results in better final audio but also makes the editing process much easier. If you're new to this, remember, a good recording equals good final audio. On the flip side, a poor recording will lead to poor final audio, no matter how much processing you apply or how expensive your software is. So, what settings should you configure to ensure a proper recording? There are several, and you'll see them listed on the screen. While it may look like a lot, don't worry, we'll go through each step by step. A quick note, if you are looking for a comprehensive guide for your Audacity learning, I have an Audacity bundle for you. It has both courses, and sound better tool for Audacity. If you are into audiobooks, voiceover, or looking to learn Audacity well, the bundle is the solution. I will talk a bit more about this bundle later. You will find the bundle link in the description. Let's get back to our tutorial. I'll dismiss this current recording since it wasn't set up with the ideal configuration. The first thing we'll do is select the microphone for recording. Keep in mind that you can often complete the same task in multiple ways within a software, so feel free to use whichever method you find most convenient. To begin, click on the audio setup button to access configuration options. Here, you can set up your recording device, which shows all the microphones connected to your computer. You may notice some unfamiliar names on the list, these are virtual microphones from other software on your computer. What matters is that your desired microphone appears on the list and is selected. The currently selected microphone will have a check mark beside it. In this example, the MacBook Pro microphone is selected. If I were to record now, the MacBook Pro microphone would be used. To select a different microphone, just click on its name. For instance, if I want to use my Samson C01U mic, I would click on its name, and it would become the selected device for recording. You can confirm that the Samson mic is now selected because the check mark will appear next to it in the recording device list. It's important to know what name your microphone appears under, as different models may display different names. For example, my Samson USB mic is labeled as Samson C01U Pro mic. However, I also have a Sennheiser mic connected to my computer, but its name isn't showing up. This issue can happen if you plug in the microphone after Audacity is already open. If this happens to you, there's a simple fix. You'll see an option labeled Rescan Audio Devices. By clicking Rescan, Audacity will refresh the list of connected microphones. After rescanning, I'll check the audio setup button again to see if my devices have updated. Now, you can see a new device called Scarlett 2i2 USB has appeared. Scarlett is my audio interface, and my Sennheiser microphone is connected through it. The device shows the name of the interface, not the microphone itself. By selecting Scarlett 2i2 USB, I'll be using my Sennheiser mic for recording. I'll click on Scarlett 2i2 USB to select it for recording, and I can verify it's selected by checking the audio setup button. 
Keep in mind, when the microphone is connected to an audio interface, the audio interface name will be shown in the list instead of microphone name. If you're a beginner, I recommend using the device toolbar to double check which microphone is selected. There's a good reason for this, and I'll explain it shortly. To access the device toolbar, go to View Toolbars. The toolbars currently displayed will have check marks next to them. Since the device toolbar doesn't have a check mark, it's not visible right now. I'll click on it to make it appear. Now that the device toolbar is visible, you can always check which microphone is currently selected for recording. The device toolbar is one of the most useful toolbars in Audacity, but it's not shown by default. To prevent using the wrong microphone for recording, always enable it from the menu. This way, you can easily see which microphone you're using during your recording session. It's easy to forget to select the correct microphone, I've seen many clients make this mistake. Imagine finishing a long recording, only to find out you used the wrong mic. That's why I always recommend showing the device toolbar to avoid this frustration. After selecting the correct microphone, you'll need to choose the recording channel. This can be done from either the device toolbar or the audio setup button. Let's check the device toolbar first. You'll find a drop-down menu for selecting the recording channel, with two options, mono or stereo. If you're using a USB microphone, you may only see mono. If you have an audio mixer, you could see more channels, but for voiceover recording, mono is all you need. The recording channel can also be set from the audio setup button. For voiceover, mono is fine. If you're recording music, you might want to use stereo, which allows you to add different effects to the left and right sides of the audio. For voice recording, it's best to keep things simple and stick with mono. Now that we've selected both the microphone and recording channel, it's time to check the audio settings. While the default settings are generally okay, they do need some attention to make sure your recording sounds its best. The default audio settings are generally fine, but it's important to review them for optimal voice recording quality. Let me explain why. If you overlook this, you might waste time focusing on the wrong adjustments, thinking they'll improve your recording. When I check the audio settings, I look at the sample rate and sample format. You don't need to know the technical details here, just understand that these settings affect how sound is converted from analog, like your voice, to digital data that a computer can store and process. Your microphone captures sound as an analog signal, which computers can't store directly. For storage, it needs to be converted to digital form, made up of zeros and ones. The sample rate represents how many sound samples are taken per second during this conversion. In theory, higher sample rates capture more audio detail, but in practice, 44.1 kHz is enough to capture full quality sound. Using a lower sample rate, like 32 kHz or below, risks losing audio detail, so it's best to avoid those. On the other hand, higher rates like 88 kHz won't improve quality noticeably but will increase file size, using more storage. Therefore, 44.1 kHz provides the best balance of quality and file size. In some cases, such as exporting audio from video, you might encounter a 48 kHz sample rate, which is also fine. Many audio standards, like MP3s and CD quality audio, use 44.1 or 48 kHz, so either is acceptable. However, I see no practical reason to choose anything other than 44.1 kHz for most recordings. I'm emphasizing this because beginners sometimes mistakenly think a poor recording quality is due to the sample rate, which leads them to unnecessary adjustments. If you're recording at 44.1 kHz and experience quality issues, the problem likely lies elsewhere, perhaps with the microphone, recording environment, or technique. You'll see two sample rate options, Project sample rate, specific to each project, and default sample rate, applies to new projects by default. Set both to 44.1 kHz. The default sample format can also be confusing. It should be set to 32-bit float. Although some audio specifications call for 24-bit file encoding, that's different from sample format. You can select file encoding during export, so stick with 32-bit float for recording, it's flexible and allows easier editing. If this sounds complex, just remember, use a 44.1 kHz sample rate and a 32-bit float sample format. Most platforms accept these settings. Later, I'll cover export settings in detail to help you meet specific platform requirements. For recording in Audacity, simply set the sample rate to 44.1 kHz and the sample format to 32-bit float. That's all you need. Let's now discuss about the playback device a bit. In the device toolbar, it is the last drop-down with the speaker icon. This option isn't essential during recording unless you're using live monitoring. This drop-down sets the playback device, which Audacity uses when you play audio. 
You can also find this option in the audio setup button, where you can select your playback device. Since I don't typically use live monitoring, I don't need to set this option before recording, I only choose the playback device when I'm ready to play something in Audacity. However, if you plan to use live monitoring or multi-track listening, selecting the correct playback device before recording becomes important. You may not need live monitoring in the beginning stages, but I'm covering it so you'll know what to do if you decide to use it later. In the transport menu, you'll find various options, including enable audible input monitoring. If there's no checkmark beside it, it means it's disabled. I don't use live monitoring, so I leave it unchecked. Live monitoring allows you to hear yourself while recording. You may notice this setup in many video podcasts where participants wear headphones, they're live monitoring their audio. For voiceover work, I don't find live monitoring necessary. Another option available is hear other tracks during recording, previously called overdub. This feature allows you to listen to other tracks during multi-track recording. I don't have a checkmark beside it, which means it's not enabled. While I don't typically use these options, now you know where to find them if you want to try them out. Let's talk about an essential concept in audio recording, input or recording level, sometimes called gain staging. This is crucial for getting high-quality audio. Audacity has two meters to help monitor audio levels, the recording level meter and the playback level meter. You can drag these meters to reposition them and make them longer for better visibility. I'll increase the scale now to make the levels easier to read. Proper audio levels are essential for effective post-processing. Your editing skills will improve as you learn to read and interpret these meters. The recording meter has a slider for adjusting gain inside Audacity. You can drag this slider to control the recording level. I prefer to keep this slider 100% and control gain in other ways, but I am showing you how this works in case you need it. It may freeze, especially during screen recordings if I use an audio interface. For example, it's frozen right now while I'm screen recording. To demonstrate, I'll switch to my MacBook Pro's microphone, where the slider works normally. Please keep in mind you should adjust the slider after selecting the proper microphone. I have switched the microphone just to show how the slider works. You can drag the slider to see the recording level percentage change. Double-clicking the slider opens a pop-up with a more visible control. Usually, I keep it 100% and adjust the gain from the microphone or audio interface. You should keep the slider to 100% and try those places to adjust the gain. If you still cannot achieve the proper level, then you should try this slider. Now, let's address the ideal recording level. Before recording, check that you're hitting the correct input level. Click the small microphone icon and enable silent monitoring. This lets you see the current input level in the meter. You should monitor the level with the microphone you plan to use for recording. I'm switching back to my Scarlett 2i2 USB interface, which has turned off silent monitoring, so I'll re-enable it. Speak into the microphone as you would during the recording and check the meter. Avoid the red zone, which starts above minus 3 dB. The meter's maximum value is 0 dB, so if your audio goes above that, it will distort. Distortion, caused by exceeding 0 dB, is nearly impossible to fix, so staying below the red zone is critical. A good rule of thumb is to aim for peaks no higher than minus 6 dB during recording. Peaks represent the loudest parts of your audio. Try to keep louder phrases below minus 6 dB, and in general, your levels should range from minus 18 to minus 6 dB. This range captures enough audio detail for quality post-processing. Recording at levels like minus 30 or minus 24 dB is likely too low, indicating a setup issue. This might mean your microphone gain isn't set correctly, or you're too far from the microphone. Aim to maintain a proper distance from the microphone. With the ideal distance, you're likely to get a good quality recording. The ideal distance for mic-to-mouth is around 4 to 8 inches. It depends on what type of voiceover you are doing and how loud you talk during voiceover. When recording levels are optimal, post-processing will be much easier. Set your input level before recording to help position your microphone and gauge how loudly to speak. You do not need to be super specific about these levels, but recording close to the ideal level will make your job easier. In summary, aim for minus 12 to minus 6 dB during loud peaks, with regular speech between minus 24 and minus 10 dB. This setup will give you a strong signal for post-processing. If you're not reaching this range, increase the gain on your microphone or audio interface. If the level is still low, try positioning the microphone differently, moving closer, or speaking louder. Once you've set everything up, press record and start your session. Welcome to this step-by-step -step Audacity tutorial for beginners. I am using Audacity 3.6.4 for this tutorial series. It was the latest version when this video was made. 
please note that this is a very detailed tutorial to get you started with audacity smoothly you are watching the first part of this video on how to get started with voice recording and then after recording the first thing you should do is save your project this ensures that if audacity crashes or your computer shuts down your work is safe Saving creates an AUP3 file, which is unique to Audacity and can only be opened within the software. It's different from exporting audio files, which you'll need to do if you want to send the audio somewhere or use it on another platform. To save your project, go to File a Save Project. You'll be prompted to choose a location on your computer. Audacity also has a cloud save option, but for now, let's focus on saving locally. If you don't want to see this option every time, check the box to remember your choice. I'll click Save to Computer and select a location to save the project. The file will be an Audacity project with an .op3 extension. I'll choose a save location without going into the details of the selection process. Next, name your project and click Save. This will allow you to reopen the project later and resume work from your last save point. Remember, Audacity doesn't have an autosave feature, so you'll need to manually save any changes you want to keep. Note that the Audacity project is saved as an op3 file, which can only be opened in Audacity. Now, the project is saved, and you can see the project name here. I'll navigate to the location where I saved the Audacity file. Here, you can see the Audacity project. Alongside the .op3 file, there are two additional supporting files. These are temporary files generated because the project is currently open in Audacity. If I close Audacity, these extra files will disappear. After closing Audacity, only the .op3 file remains. You can open the project by double-clicking the op3 file, which will restore the recording. To play the audio from any point on the timeline, click at the desired spot and press the spacebar, or use the play button. Welcome to this step-by-step -step Audacity tutorial for beginners. I am using Audacity. You might notice the audio sounds quieter than the current narration. This is where post-processing comes in. The next step is post-processing, which will help improve the sound quality. This will be covered in detail in the next part of the tutorial, and you can find the link in the description. So what do we need for a top quality recording? In summary, before recording, set the correct microphone. The device toolbar always shows the selected microphone, so I recommend enabling it. Set your recording channel to mono for voiceovers. Use a 44.1 kHz sample rate and 32-bit float sample format for the best recording quality. Monitor your recording level to stay within the ideal range and avoid distortion. Save your project immediately after recording to avoid data loss. If you're new to audio recording, keep in mind that simply recording your voice isn't enough to achieve high-quality audio. Post-processing is essential to make your recording sound professional. This is where audio editing software, like Audacity, excels. If you're aiming to build long-term skills in audio recording and editing, consider joining my mailing list. I regularly share audio tutorials through the mailing list that will help you gain a deeper understanding of the audio editing process. You'll find a link to subscribe in the description. For those who want to master Audacity for professional voiceover work or audiobook narration, I offer a comprehensive Audacity bundle. If improving the quality of your voice recordings is your goal, this bundle is an ideal solution. The Audacity bundle includes several courses and sound better tools. The courses cover both older versions of Audacity and the latest 3.6 and 3.7 releases. In fact, I provide separate courses for different versions, all accessible through the bundle. The bundle also includes one-click macros designed to enhance your voice quickly and efficiently, saving you valuable time. You'll find the link to the bundle in the description, where you can explore all the details. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out via email, which is also listed in the description. Many people have successfully produced audiobooks and landed voiceover jobs after completing the courses in the bundle. I highly recommend checking it out.